Hello and welcome back to Dave's Delights. As always, I'm Dave, and today it delights me to say, I've been challenged. So on one of my uh, Facebook groups that, I'm, uh, that, I, go, that I go to uh, and look at, it's a, a flavor-related one, they, uh, somebody came on with a bunch of uh, old recipes and said, hey, we have no one's seen these in forever. Is anyone willing to try them out? And I said, that sounds like it's just my speed. So we're going to try out Igloo Meatloaf. Now, this picture showed up on the cover of Family Circle in 1967, showing what was considered at the time to be a pretty balanced di dinner of meatloaf, igloo-style, green bean casserole, some kind of jello mold, and glasses of milk, which I assume were right Russians pretty much as soon as that photo shoot was done. But either which way, it's, uh, it doesn't look like a bad recipe. I could probably figure this out. So let's look at the uh, let's look at what they came up with for their 1967 list of ingredients. Evaporated milk, instant onions, potato buds. We can do better than this, and we will. So we're going to have to come up with my own version of this recipe, which I'm going to show you presently. Stay tuned. So we're going to have to break this down into a couple of different sections because we're actually doing a couple of different uh, cooking processes while we're at, while we're at this. First off is me the potatoes. Now, if you like instant potatoes and you want to use instant potatoes, because that'll definitely save you a bunch of time, uh, that's up to you. And there, for people who like them, there's nothing wrong with them. But personally, I don't really like mashed potatoes all that much at all. I'd rather have it as a baked potato. But if I'm going to have them, I'd rather have them be real. And my wife... Um, if, if I made instant potatoes, we would learn what color they go well with on the wall. So for me, my house is not an option. We're going with, we're going with real potatoes. So what we got to do, and I've got eight potatoes, well, I think I might actually have 10 potatoes here, but I got a bunch of potatoes. We're going to peel and cube all these and get them into a pot of salted, heavily salted water. Now you can salt at many parts during this process, but my wife has told me, and she's a master at mashed potatoes that if the, she can always tell when I don't salt the water enough. So I take, you know, like a handful of salt and get it, of kosher salt and get it into the pot while I'm filling it. And you want to fill the pot, however big your pot is, about halfway, because we're going to peel as we go and do them one potato at a time, because these things turn black and oxidize really quickly just sitting on the counter once they've been peeled. So you want to get them diced up and into the water pot as soon as you can, so that way they'll stay their normal color. So I'm going to cut over to the uh, you know, to the cutting board workstation, and I'll get most of them done, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about on the next on the next little step here. So I will see you in just a blink of an eye over there. All right. So this is a peeled potato. Obviously, you guys know how to peel a potato, and we're going to cut it. Remember, wash your hands. We're going to cut it into four pieces, and then I'm going to quarter these as well which will give me individual pieces about that big. And I'm going to put them in my pot of salted water that's off to the right here. And as soon as they're all in, I'm going to bring this to the boil. And as soon as it's on boil, I'm going to bring it down to simmer. And I'm going to simmer them until I can place my knife right through the potatoes. I want to have no resistance as I go in. And at that point, we drain the water. We move on to the next step. So I'm going to get this on the, uh, on the fire. And I will see you guys back as soon as these potatoes have done their job. See you soon. So now, while the potatoes are boiling, we can start putting together the meatloaf part of our meatloaf. Uh, what we got is two pounds of ground meat. Now, you can just use beef, but my butcher makes a meatloaf mix, which is, thir which is three parts, you know, one part pork, one part beef, and one part veal. And I really found that it's uh, it gives a really good flavor. So that's what I go with. But you can pick whatever you like. Uh, if you want it to all be turkey, it can be that too. But whatever meat you're planning on having the meatloaf, have two pounds of it ground. And a bowl. And the meat's going to go into the bowl. Now, I hope you have washed your hands because this is going to be a very handsy job once we get going. We have a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Now, I chose Italian 
but you could use plain and but this will add some more seasoning to my uh to my dinner to my meal so that's why i went with italian breadcrumbs but you can pick any type you like in they go and two teaspoons of salt goes in half a teaspoon of pepper goes in a teaspoon of ground rosemary now you can get this at the store but if for whatever reason in your spice rack at the store they don't have it you can take regular dried rosemary and just grind it up a little bit you know mortar and pestle or however you want to break it down and then that goes in we have a quarter cup of pretty finely diced yellow onion or white onion your choice that goes in there now personally i used to like putting a lot of uh, green pepper in as well but i found that a lot of my guests didn't care that much for it so i stopped now i need eggs now i think two eggs would be too much here so i'm going to use an egg and a half the full egg that goes in and for a half egg i got my girl's eggs uh they've only been laying for about eight days so I have the right now they're all still these little fairy eggs, but that's going to work pretty well as a half an egg. And it goes. Oh, so fresh. It's always nice getting stuff out of your own produce. And then I need a cup of evaporated milk. Now I know in the intro I said, oh gosh, evaporated milk, but that <laughs> it was the other things that really make me go. Ugh. Evaporated milk is good for cooking and baking. So there's nothing wrong with that. And when I looked at my, my can of evaporated milk, <laughs> today, literally today, is the day of the ex uh, where it says Best Buy. So might as well use it anyway. Here's a cup of that going in. And depending on how this looks when we mix it up, I might add a little bit more, maybe at most a third a cup more. But I think with all those breadcrumbs, this is going to be plenty. So now, gross part of the day, but we're going to get our hands in there and we'll mix this up real good. And if you're doing it messy, you're doing it right. We're trying to get this completely incorporated together. And it is every bit as gross as you think it is. But this is what's going to make the best looking meatloaf. Blech. And as you can see, that is now incorporated. And we're gonna, I'm going to chill this in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes just to let the flavors come together. And then I'm going to come back to the next step. But i got to get this off my hands. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, we've gotten the meat out of the refrigerator. And it has stiffened up nicely. And the, uh, all the flavors will have kind of mixed together a little bit better. So this is now ready to make into a form. Now, if you notice, the igloo idea is a big, kind of tall, round shape. So my meatloaf pan isn't going to cut it. But I do have this metal mixing bowl that's a pretty good size. If you look at it, that's going to be about right. So I've greased the inside of this. And I want to make a little reservoir at the top there, uh, which I'll explain why later. But I've got my little, uh, you know, one of these measuring cups that I use, or a uh, Sauce, you know, like dipping bowl. And I'm going to take some spray and spray that so it'll release a little bit easier. And I'm going to take my meat, and again, gross hands. And we're going to pack that down into here, carefully trying to keep that reservoir in the middle. And we're just going to pack this into the form. It's going to take the whole two pounds, it looks like, which is nice. And it's actually almost exactly right. All right. So this, again, now we've changed the shape of it. So I want to let it set. Uh, give it, so you got to give it some rest time. If I pull it or try to flip it out right now, it'll all come back apart. So I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator for 10 more minutes, just 10 minutes. And then I'm going to flip it over onto a baking, uh, a baking dish. So I will see you guys back when we're ready to put it into the oven. See you then. All right, time to get interesting. 
I gave this a flip already, but I've got a baking sheet that I have, a, like a baking dish that I have foil wrapped and greased because I want to be able to get that thing back out again later. So we flip this over and we are going to lift nice and gently the lid up and pull my little reservoir maker out. And I end up with a nice round meatloaf with a little reservoir in the middle, which we're going to fill with goo before we put the um, before we put the mashed potatoes on top. So this should be pretty interesting. So what I got to do now is I got to put this in a 325 degree oven for an hour. We want to like get that meatloaf really going. And the reason I'm using a deep dish here is because I'm expecting that this is going to put off some grease. And I was worried about with a regular baking sheet that if there was too much grease, it might go over and get all over my oven. So we're going to avoid that by just putting this in with a deepness. Once this is done, we're going to transfer to a flatter sheet for final for the final when we bring the mashed potatoes together with it. But for the moment, this is getting cooked up. So we'll see you as soon as it's ready to be pulled out. So while we wait on the meatloaf, the potatoes are now boiled out and they are super soft, as you can see. So what we're going to add next, there I've drained the water out of them, and I'm going to add that stick of butter, salted, and I'm going to put a half a teaspoon, about that much, of salt. And that is going to get mashed with a masher. And we're going to mash this all together. And when it turns into a nice even pile, then I'm going to add, start adding milk to it until it softens up. And I don't have a real amount of milk here because you pretty much have to eyeball it. Milk goes in. That might have been a quarter cup. Because we're trying to lighten these potatoes up. You can use cream if you want to as well, but I find that uh, most people, this is already a pretty rich ditch as it is. I don't know if we need to add the full cream to the, to the party. And we can get this pretty mashed up just with a masher. But we're going to have to go to the next workstation to get it so light and pillowy for what we're trying to do with it, which is going to be using an egg beater or a hand mixer to really whip those potatoes up and get them extra soft. Now we're going to have to keep adding milk as needed to keep on letting them build up. And uh, once we get to the right consistency, which should be like frosting, we'll be done and we're ready to dress the meatloaf once it gets out. I will see you shortly. I just want to show you this briefly because I'm 99% sure it's going to be too loud for us to do the whole process with, but I have an egg beater. I go into here. And look how quickly that's whipping up. So we're going to get this until it's like pillowy clouds. And then it'll be ready to put on. And once we have the components ready to combine, I'm going to bring us back and we are going to frost ourselves a meatloaf. See you soon. At this point, I have pulled the meatloaf out of the oven. It's been an hour. And I definitely have made the right choice by using a deeper dish for this part. Because, yeah, this has definitely uh, got some grease rendered off of it. So we got another 15 minutes back in here. What we want to do is I want to do something with this little hole that I've created. So I've got mm, about a quarter cup of shredded cheddar and mozzarella cheese and a pinch of that ground rosemary kind of mixed in, which we're going to fill this reservoir with. Just so. And then this is going to go back into the oven for another 15 minutes. At which point, I'll pull it out, and we're going to move on to frosting it. All right. I will see you guys back. This looks like it's going to be pretty fun. I'll see you guys back here soon. Welcome back. <laughs> you can call me chicken if you like, but I decided to do the transfer from the one tray to the other for the meatloaf off camera. So that way, if the floor got a meatloaf, at least we wouldn't all see it. But anyway... I now have this meatloaf is nice and crispy and it's cooked most of the way through, if not all the way through already. Now we need to frost it. So we've got our mashed potatoes. And this is going to be interesting. And now that I'm 
as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, you know what would be really nice to have? And wash your hands. Would be a frosting knife, which I don't own, so. Which is in horses. But we're just going to keep on frosting these mashed potatoes on. And it's going to take a little time to make it pretty. But you can see what we're doing. I'm going to get all these mashed potatoes onto this, make it into a nice dome, and I'll get right back to you. Voila! Nice and surrounded. Now, if any of you guys have ever seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind, this means something. This is important. But I gotta, now i got to make the uh, snow bricks, don't I? So I take a little paring knife, and I'm just going to cut some outlines. And we're not going to go nuts with it. This does. This is for looks only. It doesn't have to go all the way through. So I've made three rows, and now I just got to plump, plump. I'm going to make some vertical lines so that we then have big blue bricks. On the second row, you go in between where the other ones were. And on the bottom row, same thing again, halfway in between. And you get the picture. Now, if you look at this original picture, it has cheese on the top. And I assure you that that was meant to be one of those not actually cheese, oil, uh, you know, oil-based uh, cheese product slices. But uh, we don't keep those in this house. So I have two slices of mild cheddar, which are gonna go on top, just so, and like a little star pattern, as you can see. And then that's going to melt as it goes back in the oven here. And we're gonna give this 15 more minutes in the oven to let everything get warmed back up, basically, and let this cheese melt down. And we'll come back and we'll see how it all came out. So far, this is looking like a pretty feasible recipe. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a little bit. 15 minutes has elapsed, and the uh, final results are out of the oven here. Now, this actually came out looking pretty good. I'm happy with this. But we have one more trick that we're going to have to pull. I got a serving dish. This has got to get off of the tray and onto the serving dish. And what you'll find is uh, sometimes just having larger kinds of spatulas can help you out with that job. So my, what my is, estimation here is going to be going in underneath from both sides and then lifting and moving. Now, I am a chicken, so I'm going to do that off screen, but I'll be right back with you once we have that onto the plate. See you in just a moment. Is everybody ready for the big reveal? Here we go. You can see the 1967 version. And there's mine. As you can see, it came out really, really good. All things considered, and with a little bit of practice and doing this a couple more times, I could probably make those bricks look even more brick-like. But the smell's great. It looks good. I even made the uh, green bean casserole that went alongside it. And what we're going to do is we're going to enjoy the whole meal tonight. So I'm going to get myself back into, into the picture here. And it's... Pretty big. I figure this could serve four to six people, depending on how, on how hungry they are. Um, it is two pounds of meat, after all. Feel free to try this at home. I mean, it, it's one of those dishes that is apparently timeless. I would love to have you guys give me some comments on that, and I hope that this, uh, <coughs> I hope that this takes care of that challenge. Anyhow, it's been a pleasure. I always have fun when uh, spending time with you guys. Uh, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and. Uh, Tell me what to do next. Have a nice day.